In this video, we're just going to see the basic operation of the if decision construct. This decision construct is perhaps the, one of the more basic, but the most important decision construct in, in Java. For there are only really two decision constructs, the if and the switch statement. But it is important to know the workings of either or. Okay, so we're going to use a simple example that I'm, I'm laying out here. I have my code here, very, very simple. And on line 5, int x is equal to 5. And as you can see with a comment afterwards, declare the variable of data type int and initialize it with a value of 5. I am going to use this variable for the purposes of this video. Right, the best thing to actually do at this point in time is to actually make out the components of the actual if decision construct itself. So if you want to use an if, the first thing you type in is the keyword if, in lowercase if, lowercase is important. The next part of the construct is the round brackets. What this will contain is a test to see to to see whether we can go in and actually do the operations that we need to do if this test is true or false. So what I'm actually going to do here is a simple test if x is equal to 5, which we can see it clearly is. Now, the next part is the important part, and it's one of the parts that can confuse a lot of beginners, is the curly brackets or the curly parenthesis, whichever way you want to say it, starting and ending one. The important point here is, is this, is that this parenthesis or this bracket starts there on line 7 and ends at line 9. Now you can place as much code as you want between those, which we will in a few seconds. But the important point is this, this is that the scope of this if is from line 7 until line 9. So what basically happens is as follows. Is the test here, x is equal to 5, is evaluated. If it is true, go in past this curly bracket and do whatever is between here and this curly bracket down here in line 9. So I'm just going to do a very, very simple printout, a very, very obvious one. So again, using the shortcut SOUT, press the tab button, and I just print a, a very, very simple printout. X is equal to 5. Okay. So I'll just mark this also to end of, whoops, of F. Right. So. What I'm going to do here now is clean and build this project now and run it. And we should see a printout of x is equal to 5. So run that. x is equal to 5. So yes, we have gone in there. To actually show that that works, I'm actually going to change x's value is equal to 6. Okay. And run that again. Build successful, but there was no printout. So therefore, then we never went into line 8. Okay. Now, actually, we I could show to verify that, but that's for a debugging purpose. Also, to note one important factor here, just as a small aside. Int x is equal to 6. And note that it's 1 equal to sign. This is when line here is assigning the value of 6 to the variable x. But down here where you're using 2 equals the signs is actually testing if x's value is equal to 5. Okay? So what I'll do here is, is this is change this back. Now, this, vi this, this code here is a bit useless because obviously you either want to state that it is equal to 5 or is not equal to 5. So if you know that you can perform one test but you're either going to say, look, it is equal to 5 in this case, or it's not equal to 5. You could use an if-else statement. So basically what will happen here, and it's important to point out a few things, is, again, is that if it doesn't match the test on line, on line 7, it will go down, 
and there is no test at line 9 and it will just perform what's between the brackets between line 9 and line 11 so in this case x is not equal to 5 okay and I'll run that twice obviously leaving it at 5 at the moment and we can see x is equal to 5 and I'll change x's value now to 6 and run that and we can see x is not equal to 5 being printed out here in the output okay so that's a simple if else now again in most cases that decision constructs will obviously be a bit more complex than this so what i'm actually going to do is, is this is show an if else if else so in other words we have two tests they will be both evaluated and if neither of them are false it will just fall into an else okay so i'll just change around a few things here okay If x is less than 5, x is, and change the corresponding printouts. Now, I'll put something here if x is less than 10. And I'll just put then. Right, and I just just make a few changes here, and I just need to explain this. And just one more printout. Sorry now for the delay. Just to explain one important point here is that if you have an if else if else it can only meet one of the criteria in other words in this case here we've got if x is less than 5 okay system out that print line x is less than 5 so if it meets that criteria it will run this once it does run this it will go to the end of the if and continue on its execution. So therefore, lines nine to um, lines nine to thirteen are, are are irrelevant at this point in time. So just in case anyone might think, hang on a second, doesn't it match two of the tests? No. What it actually does is that if, it, if it's known, it, basically, it will perform the first test that it evaluates to true. It's a bit different to the way a switch statement works, but we'll come across that later. So I'll just run this. So we should see the middle value being printed there because it's six. Okay, it doesn't meet the first one, but it meets the second test. Okay, so if I run that, and you can see there, x is greater than or equal to five, but less than 10. Now, just a small other point too, is the reason why I put in or equal to is because we're testing here x is less than 5. So if the value is actually 5, it would still match the middle criteria. So I'll just change that there, x is equal to 5, and run that, just to prove that. And there, okay? But what if it was obviously 50? Which statement would it run then? It should run the last one. Okay, x is greater than or equal, or greater than or equal to ten. Okay, now this is very very simplified if else if else state um, statement, and this is a very simplified beginning beginners tutorial to the if statement. So what I will do in the description below is place the code here. 
all this code that you will just need to copy and paste into your own main method code and then um, mess about with it try and break it and see what actually happens okay now obviously there will be there's there's common mistakes that are made and so forth like that but we will cover those in greater detail at a later point in time thank you very much for your attention and what i will do in the next video is look at a more detailed explanation of the if statement especially in terms of the, of more logical operators and the whole notion of the short circuit operators okay